So I'm desensitized to it. It doesn't scare me anymore. It doesn't wake me up out of my sleep anymore unless it's right here. It is an unfortunate reality for so many people across Indianapolis. So much gun violence and death. People right now are left numb to the reality of what's happening around them. In just a matter of six hours, we saw two people killed, two others injured in shootings. And it's not just affecting one area. Check out this map. It has reached all corners of our city and impacts people of all ages, including a teen who lost their life last night. So tonight, Emily Longnecker spoke to one man who narrowly survived a dangerous encounter. And tonight he's sharing his experience in hopes it stops this senseless gun violence. I pray and sometimes I even cry because we got to do better. But 60 year old Mohammed El Amin admits he doesn't have the answer on how to do that when it comes to gun violence in Indianapolis. He's still trying to heal after being caught in the crossfire this past April when someone shot up this parking lot at 38th and Emerson. Elamine was heading into a birthday party. It was two holes in my head and, and I, blood was running down my face, out of my mouth, out of my nose. Despite the chaos, Elamine remembers a woman helping him. She was putting pressure on the wound while I was laying there. The 60-year-old spent two months recovering in Methodist Hospital after doctors operated and lost him two times on the table bringing him back each time. That's why the doctors kept calling me their miracle patient. Elamine remembers laying in a hospital bed, hearing about more shootings, both locally and across the country. I'm sitting in the bed, you know, fighting for my life, and I hear coming across there that some guy went into the school and shot up the school. And I'm, you know, my heart just filled out, and I stopped praying. Despite IMPD having 330 camera views across the city, to this day, Elamine still doesn't know who's responsible for him losing his right eye and the titanium plate that now makes up half of his face, not to mention the excruciating pain in his head that he wakes up with most days. I can't hardly see. I'm just learning how to walk all back over again. At the time of the shooting, the city hadn't yet started installing its new license plate readers. That started nearly two weeks ago. By early September, IMPD plans to have a total of 244 license plate readers up and running. No one knows. And this is crazy. And I still say somebody got to know. For now, Mohammed Alamin is focusing on healing and talking more about what happened to bring awareness to the victims of gun violence who survived and what life looks like for them afterwards. I'm here for a reason. It's undoubtedly. If anybody want to argue that point, let them argue that point. I'm here for a reason. And, and I don't know what the reason is, but whatever God has planned for me to do, I'm, I want to do. Yeah, it's a miracle he survived. Tonight, the recent rise that we're seeing in shootings has captured the attention of both candidates for Marion County prosecutor. Incumbent Ryan Mears sat down with our Sierra Putman today. He's blaming our state's new permitless carry law without clear evidence supporting the claim. It seems like a lot of the statement is based off anecdotal information that you're getting from people. Where are you getting that information from? Well, it's, it, it, it hasn't even been 60 days yet. Uh, and, and so, you know, if you're looking for empirical data, uh, certainly it's going to take a little bit more time to develop that in empirical data because it hasn't been that long. Even somebody, I think, who might agree with that belief might say this statement can't actually be proven at this point. Well, I think what we can prove is we are seeing more violence over confrontations. IMPD and state police are telling us they don't have evidence yet showing the law's impact on violence. Meanwhile, Republican challenger for prosecutor Cindy Carrasco told us Mears is to blame, citing his continued use of sweetheart plea deals, putting violent repeat offenders back on the streets. Indianapolis is also trying out a gunshot detection system on the Near East Side to see if it helps reduce crime. This alerts officers to exactly where and when shots are fired. And tonight, we have a new timeline for when it'll be up and running. The pilot program launched in April. In the last few months, IMPD has been installing equipment and starting training. Phase two begins in a couple of weeks when police begin analyzing data and canvassing areas. Then phases three through five start in late September. That's when officers begin 24 seven live response to notifications. There are three different vendors they're trying out for three weeks apiece. After that wraps up, 
Phase 6 starts reviewing responses. The pilot program should end by early November, and IMPD will send data to researchers at IUPUI to start discussing next steps. The goal is to see whether the system helps with response times and evidence collection. We have details posted on WTHR.com.